Hey guys. Hey guys. Have you ever watched the shorts on Iodine Clock? You haven't? It's up here. In this video, we're going to go over that reaction in a bit more detail. We're also going to show you how to make that reaction at home too. So here are the five major ingredients you need. The first one is starch, potassium iodide, sodium thiosulfate, citric acid, and hydrogen peroxide, specifically 3%. To perform this reaction, you need two different solutions. The first one needs starch, potassium iodide, sodium thiosulfate, and some water. The second one needs citric acid and 3% hydrogen peroxide. <coughs> so, you want to get started? Yeah! Alright. So, in our first cup, we add a small amount of potassium iodide. You don't need that much because the iodine starch complex's color is so deep that even very small amounts of it can cause a noticeable reaction. Please, don't put a ton of it. Only very small quantities can suffice. Mamma mia, that's a lot. The next ingredient we need to add is starch. We don't need that much starch either because there's so little iodine. So we need only a little bit of starch to complex with it to produce a blue color. Cool. What? That's too little. That's more like snow falling from the sky. This much is actually enough. Yeah, it's more like a mound of snow. Now for our last ingredient here, we need sodium thiosulfate. You can buy sodium thiosulfate from the aquarium store or the pool store because sodium thiosulfate is very efficient at removing chlorine. So let's add a few milliliters of the 35% solution in here. Okay. I'm using about 3 milliliters of a 35% solution. Fire! And now we add a little bit of water to help all the reagents dissolve. Fire! And then we stir the solution until well, everything dissolves. Okay. One, two, three, four. Spin it faster. Ah! Let's spin it later. Okay. Now for our next solution, we need need a little bit of citric acid. Note the fact that any other acid can be used, such as acetic acid, but citric acid was chosen because citric acid is safe, non-toxic, and also quite easy and cheap. Easy to get and cheap. So you add a small amount right here. And now for the final ingredient, you just need some 3% hydrogen peroxide. You can get this in the pharmacy because it's a very good disinfectant. So now let's add the 3% hydrogen peroxide into the cup. As you can see, I'm adding quite a bit of it because the 3% solution is quite dilute. Yeah. Now you have to mix it around and wait for everything to dissolve. Alright, ready to mix them up? Yeah! Alright, let's do this. Uh -hoo. Dump it in fast. Sure. Oh no, I dropped a lot. Wow! It's so cool, isn't it? Yeah! So now, let's see the explanation for this reaction. Yeah! To, to the, the board. board! So if you want some of my past videos, like the reaction I did with potassium permanganate, then you'll see that the reaction immediately occurred after I mixed the two reagents. For this reaction, it didn't seem like anything was happening until at some point when it suddenly turned black. But actually, 
A reaction did start the moment I mixed the two solutions. It just wasn't apparent. These two reactions immediately started the moment and I mixed the two solutions. The hydrogen peroxide and the acidic protons given off by a citric acid reacted with the iodide ions to produce aqueous iodine. However, this iodine was immediately reduced by the thiosulfate ions back to the colorless iodide ions. So basically, the iodide was oxidized to iodine and then quickly reduced back to iodide again. So basically, there's just a loop reaction, so there's nothing, there's no overall formation of iodine. However, eventually, all the thiosulfate ions are depleted from the solution. And now, because of that, iodine can start building up in solution since there's no more thiosulfate ions to reduce it. If that reaction occurs, then the iodine will complex with excess iodide ions to produce another ion known as triiodide, which will then complex with the starch to produce the blue starch triiodide complex. This complex has a very dark blue color, and that makes it apparent that the reaction has occurred. So that was what happened during the iodine clock reaction. The reason we call this reaction the iodine clock reaction is because it takes a predictable amount of time for the solution to change color. But you can actually change the time it changes color based on the concentration of the reagents and the temperature. So you can mix it up and have fun with it. Bye. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Subscribe and like. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.